One question I know a lot of artists get is what kind of materials do you use? What specific types of paints and uh, pencils and all kinds of things do you use? And while the what you use and the types of what you use kind of vary from person to person and really don't matter in the long run, the following will be a comprehensive look of what, co what uh, brands and qualities of paint that I use as well as the colors. In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between high-grade paint and low-grade paint and what my recommendation for you is. Now this is System 3 acrylic. This is uh, the color is burnt umber. And this paint is a medium-bodied paint, which is very cost-effective. Uh, you can pick it up pretty much at any uh, kind of regular art store. And what you'll notice about it is that it, kind of, it has a smooth texture to it. And it's pretty easily spread and worked. The second paint, which is a definite recommendation for anyone sort of just getting started, is and that's Liquitex Heavy Body. Uh, I recommend the heavy body paints rather than the medium or soft body paints, mainly because they're thicker and you can thin them out if you need to. The next one up is Naphthol Red Light. This is the brand is called Utrecht. It's a store that has a number of locations around the U.S as well as a very comprehensive online shop. Now this is my go-to brand just because it's cost-effective and it's also very high quality. Now as opposed to the Liquitex, this is a even, even thicker of a paint and it's possibly a little bit too thick but with a little bit of water it thins out very nicely. Okay, the final color we're looking at is... I think it's Pryol Red. I'm not positive if that's how you pronounce that or not. Uh, this is from a line called Golden Acrylics. This is the top-of-the-line, high-quality acrylic paint. Uh, this is like ultra-professional and uh, you notice I squeezed very little of that out there because these colors are not only uh, very professional grade, uh, they're also incredibly expensive uh, as you go along and for the starting art, the starting out artist, uh, they're probably not the way to go. Now, as you can see this color, because I didn't put nearly as much on the paper, it kind of spreads out a little differently not as much and uh, <clears throat> what you'll notice is that the consistency of this is a, somewhere a nice balance between the, the Liquidex heavy body and the, uh, the the Utrecht heavy body. Now the, these, the three I just put out, the white and the two reds, are heavy body paints and uh, this is my recommendation to you uh, is that if you're just starting out you can go with a student grade paint, a soft body paint. Uh, and it, it, it'll work well for you and then once you get the hang of it I would recommend going up to a heavy body or maybe a fluid acrylic, depending on what your needs are, if you need thinner paint or if you need thicker paint. Now between the visual consistency of the paint and what your needs are, you're going to have to experiment a little bit for yourself. I mean, I can't show you everything. But what I can do right now for you is give you a just general overview of what kind of brands are out there. Now, the two high top quality brands that I personally use are Utrecht and Golden. And I use those pretty much exclusively. Now, I'm not saying these are going to work for you, I'm just saying that's what I use. Granted, they're a professional grade paint, they cost a heck of a lot more than your standard baseline acrylics, and if you're just starting painting, I would recommend, I would not recommend those for you, just because, honestly, it's going to be a pretty big budget for you. Now, if you're somewhere in the middle between not quite beginner, not quite expert, I'd recommend picking up something along the lines of a Winsor & Newton artist acrylic, or any other artist acrylic for that matter. Uh, the professional grade, it's nice probably not really necessary for you. Uh, generally, Winsor Newton paints are, are pretty uh, pretty standard. They're, 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 they're relatively common. You can find them pretty much anywhere. And they're a great one to pick up. Now, if you've never painted before in your life, I definitely re definitely recommend picking up either System 3 or Liquidex Basics. Uh, not saying they're absolutely terrible, but they'll give you a nice start so you can play around with color theory and kind of get your bearings. Now the color palette that I use is by no means a beginner's set. I mean, I've been painting since I was about 10. And what you're going to find is that you really don't need a large variety of colors, but as you go along, as you try new things, you might find a few that really work with for your style. Now the first one, I just recently started using this, and it's the one I demoed just a mo moment ago. It's called Pryol Red. I'm not pronouncing that right. You know, whatever. Uh, I will be listing all of my colors down in the, the, the description box below, so if you want to you know, work on spelling and pronunciation, you can do that on your own time. 
Uh, now, what I like about this red is it mixes really well with yellow and makes a very vibrant, fantastic orange. My second red is Naphthol Red Light. Now, I've been using this for a number of years, and I'm starting to switch away from it to the Pryo Red. And the reason is that when mixed with yellow, it, it tends to retain more of a red color. It doesn't create a real nice orange, and when I need that nice orange, I really can't get it. Uh, what is nice about it is that it, it's a great mixing color. It, it mixes well with, with, uh, with blues and, and, and with, with um, a mix of green to make a, a really strong brown color. Now for yellow, I, uh, I'm currently using Hazana Yellow Medium. Now as far as yellows go, I like to have somewhere nice in the middle, possibly semi-transparent, but I tend to lean towards more the opaque yellows. Now as far as yellows go, to me, yellow is yellow. Pretty basic. If you need it to be lighter, yellow to white. I mean, really. Not much to say about yellow. Now I personally use two greens. Now the green that I would recommend you pick up is Thalo Green, and often in parentheses they'll call it Th Thalo Green Blue Shade, uh, mainly because that's exactly what it is. It has a slight blue tint to it. If you add white, you can almost see a, a subtle blue in it. Uh, what I like about this is, again, it's a really great mixing color, and it's generally an all-around really nice uh, green. Now what I started doing recently is I started using a color called Hooker's Green Hue. Now, what I like about Hooker's Green is that it's more natural. If you're doing more landscape painting, I'd probably recommend this one over the Thalo Green. And the reason is, is just because it makes a really good leafy green. Now, I also use two blues, and I'm going to start you again with the color I recommend you get first, Thalo Blue. Uh, again, Thalo Blue is like, like Thalo Green Blue Shade, this is Thalo Blue Green Shade. Uh, again, it's, it's kind of weird, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but... Uh, Thalo blue is what you need to know. And again, you know, all around good blue makes great skies. Uh, that's probably why I would recommend it mainly, is that it's great, great color from when mixed with white makes a brilliant blue sky. And uh, generally all around really nice. Uh, the other color is Prussian blue hue. Uh, it's it has it had its it has its uses. I, I use it to to tint other colors uh, a little bit more. I, mean, I can't really describe it, I mean, I use it here and there, but uh, it's, it's not really necessary, it's, it's more of a, a luxury. No palette is complete without this color, and that is Yellow Ochre. Uh, this one's almost empty, I'll pull out this one. Yellow Ochre uh, is a great color, it's fantastic for mixing around with, with your natural colors like I use. I use a lot of that hooker's green, I mix it with this yellow, it makes a fantastic grassy color. Great for your trees, great for foliage, and uh, all that kind of thing has a very natural tone, and if you don't use a brown, uh, much like I do, or don't rather, uh, it, it can be a good filler for any kind of brown you have, like if you mix a, uh, a red-green brown, you add a little bit of yellow ochre, it kind of rounds it right back out. Uh, this color is another essential, at least on my palette anyway, I probably wouldn't recommend it to the beginner artist. I'm just going to call it Quinn Magenta, I don't know how to pronounce the entire name, please check it out in the description below. Uh, the Quinn Magenta is exclusively in the golden color line. Uh, there are other Quinn colors. There's Quinn Red, there's Quinn Violet. Uh, it's To me, this is a great color because if you add yellow, it becomes sort of a reddish-orange. If you add blue, it becomes a brilliant purple. Uh, it's it's sort of a nice middle, middle ground, and it's great for mixing. Next is another luxury color. This is Zinc White. Uh, what I like about zinc white is that, unlike titanium white, it's transparent. And if you lay it on, you can get a sort of a gloss, uh, almost an icy look, a foggy look. And I use it in my pieces to create that sort of fog. Uh, now, what you can do is, if you don't pick up zinc white, because honestly, again, it's not really necessary. And this, well, this is actually the cheap one, actually, zinc white is, a, is, a, is one on the cheaper range of the... Uh, of the uh, uh, professional acrylics, but you will notice that there's that uh, if you just thin out uh, titanium white, you can achieve a similar effect th that the zinc white offers. And you guessed it, thus far, titanium white. Uh, this is a basic color. I seriously rec recommend picking it up. If you most beginner color theory sets will have white uh, titanium white in them. If you don't have titanium white, go pick it up. Finally is Mars Black. 
Uh, there's two types of black, mainly, uh, that people use, and that's ivory black and Mars black. Ivory black, uh, when it dries, it has a sort of a shiny quality to it, which I personally don't like. That's why I pick up the Mars black. It dries in a much more matte way. Now, a lot of artists will probably cringe when they hear that I, this, when they, when they hear that I use black. Uh, I kind of heard it either way. I, I got away from bl using black uh, a long time ago, and uh, you can create very rich darks uh, usually with a bl uh, uh, a blue orange mixture. Mixture, you can create a really nice dark color. Uh, black is not necessary. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend it right away because it's kind of a cheat. What I have found though is that certain things require black. Uh, certain silhouettes. Things that I've been doing recently, I've been doing you know, uh, mixed media work in the past few years, and you know what, black comes in handy. It's nice to have set, uh, set aside for when you really need it, but don't cheat with black. Now the two colors I didn't touch on are burnt umber and burnt sienna. They're basically tan and sort of a dark brown. Now the reason I don't recommend these to you is because a little bit like black, they're cheating colors. And honestly, they don't help you that much. I mean. For anyone who's just starting painting, what you really don't want to do is pick up brown. Because it, it doesn't teach you color theory. If you can't mix your own browns, if you can't learn that ability, you're going to be screwed pretty much forever. Now, I hit you with a lot of stuff in this video, so let me give you a little quick recap. If you're just starting painting, a student grade paint would be good. If you've been painting for a while, an artist color. And if you've been painting for quite a while, it might be time to pick up a professional grade paint. Now, as far as, far as colors go, red, yellow, blue, white. That's your basic color theory set, and it will get you started. But after a while, you might want a few colors. Now, an orange and a green are really good to pick up, uh, because honestly, depending on what colors you pick up, they may be a little more difficult to mix. Play around with your colors, visit your art store, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Ben from DMZ Films, signing out.